Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith, joined today by Lizette Salas of the LPGA. How are you? Thanks for having me. Good, thank you. Welcome to New York. Thanks. Love it. It's yeah. a little chilly. But a little, little chillier than uh, California <laughs> for you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But a nice quick stop for you. You're at the Stock Exchange this morning. How was yeah, that? Yeah, that was so cool. Uh, definitely a different vibe. Yeah. Uh, usually in the mornings, I'm at a golf course, not at the New York Stock Exchange. So it was a nice, nice, nice little, little change up, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So let's wind it all the way back because okay. you have a fascinating story. So take me back to Azusa, California. You're a little girl. Your dad's a <laughs> mechanic working at the country club. Yeah. How does the whole golf thing start up for you? Um. I guess just luck, luck of the draw. Um, my brother uh, hated golf, my sister hated golf, and and uh, I was a daddy's girl, and my dad said, you wanna come to work with me? I didn't really quite understand where he worked, how it all played out. Uh, I was seven years old and handed me a golf club, and he just said, hit it that way, and his good friend was the head pro at the time, and he came over to my dad and said, I would love to give your daughter lessons. You know, golf is super expensive yeah. and he's just, I don't, I don't know if we could do this financially. And he said, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. I found out later that my dad was doing, you know, side jobs for him, fixing cars, doing whatever he, he could, um, just so that I could get a lesson every Saturday. And so every Saturday turned into a couple more times a week, got into the junior golf tournaments locally, just started competing more. I loved trophies. Um, didn't quite understand what golf really meant, mm. what it would teach me later in right. life. And uh, I, was, I was just hooked from the start. And, um, you know, my parents, I come from a Mexican background, and my parents, immigrants, and worked so hard their entire life to give their, children's, uh, their children um, more opportunities. So I definitely took advantage of that. I uh, got a scholarship to USC. Graduated in four years, uh, first in my family to do so. Amazing, that was, yeah. Thanks, that was one of my biggest goals. Um, got to speak at our student athlete commencement, um, which was terrifying because- That was an emotional experience for you. Yeah, yeah, and I literally shared to my class and to the university my true story and the mm. struggles I had to go through with my family. And I don't think there was a, a dry eye in, no. the, in the audience. Um, then I turned pro, uh, so hopped in my dad's truck and traveled all across the United States just to follow a dream to get on the LPGA. And my dad was my caddy. I didn't have any sponsors, right. so I had to start from scratch. It was tough. It was tough, and um, you know we would do whatever to save a buck on the road, um, which didn't necessarily mean we stayed in the nicest hotels or ate the nicest food. Sure, but, but you, you're doing uh, we it. had yeah. to do it, and just so uh, got on tour in 2012, and you know, 20, 2019, eighth season coming up, wow. and played on three Solheim Cups, mm -hmm. got to represent my country. So it's been it's been quite a roller coaster ride, um, but it's been worth it. Yeah, quite a journey for you, and I think there's a ton to unpack there. So yeah, going I just back, laid it on <laughs> yeah, you, sorry. Just all, no, great for me, <laughs> no, you laid it all out there. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pull it out of people, you just spilled it out, which yeah. is awesome. So when you're a little girl and you're starting to play golf for the first time, when do you realize that you're starting to get good at this and this could potentially be the thing to kind of catapult you into college to get a scholarship? Yeah, um, I mean, as a kid, my thing was I wanted to, I played a lot with the boys. Mm -hmm. So if the boys didn't like me, that means I was doing something right. Definitely, Because yep. they definitely didn't want to lose <laughs> to a girl. Uh, I played high school golf with the guys, and so um, I had literally drained confidence from that. Mm. And there wasn't a lot of girls playing golf back in my day, or especially young Latinas playing golf. Yeah, absolutely. And so it was really hard to, to find, or to feel accepted. And, but when I got on tour, there were so many different stories, people from all across the world, um, just trying to, trying to win and try to be the best in the world. Um, but yeah, it was definitely quite an experience from when I was seven to now being 29 and, and still trying to find a place right. on this tour. Um, but our tour has done such an incredible job finding partners, uh, like Aon, like mm. CME, there's so many great partners that the LPGA gets to be with um, that it just makes um, 
our story is that much greater. Yeah, no doubt. The LPGA has really grown, and even like your area, there were yeah. Latina girls playing golf. There weren't those opportunities. How cool is it for you to be able to give back to that area with junior golf clinics and having the next generation or the next Lizette Salas is coming <laughs> from that area? Yeah, it, well, it was definitely one of my goals to give back to my community. Um, I have a junior golf clinic that, I, that we run every Tuesday um, that I'm just so passionate about because if it's not, f if it isn't for those programs to reach out to neighborhood kids, there wouldn't be maybe the next Lizette Salas right. or anyone. And I always believe that um, charity starts at home. So I would definitely love to give back to my community, to my alma mater, USC. Um, I just do whatever I can because if it weren't for those communities, I definitely would not be here. Yeah, no doubt about it. So mm -hmm. let's talk about SC. I mean, it's a special <laughs> place for a number of different reasons. Yeah. You had great success in the Pac-10 as a freshman, player of the year. So what do you remember the most about your days at USC? Oh, um, I mean, obviously winning the, the 2008 National Championship as a freshman. That's a good one to have. Yeah, <laughs> didn't, my goal was to just be in the top five, the traveling team, and I just worked so hard. Uh, definitely coming from Azusa to a prestigious university like USC, I was terrified. Mm. Uh, obviously I had moments where I didn't think I could do it, um, but I had great support from from the academic side, this, the, the university. Uh, let me see. Obviously, being a four-time All-American was uh, was is up there. Um, but definitely graduating on time. Didn't have to do summer school That's or anything like that. not an easy like thing. That. Being a student athlete. Yeah, no. But it it's so cool to yeah. to really go across camp, walk across campus, and you know, people, other your your colleagues knowing how you did the week before. Um, going to football games, it's just an experience that not many people can can share or can can go through. Um, so I wish, I mean, I wish I could still be in school and compete, but you know, there's other things I'd rather be doing. Um, but yeah, I've gotten really great relationships. I'm still close friend um, with my coach, Andrea Gaston. Nice. She's a great role model and literally gave me the opportunity to live my dream. And I think that's what USC is all about. Yeah. And it was a life-changing thing for you, too. Oh, of course. That's for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. So going back to the or first days of the LPGA, I mean, <laughs> you're having this great success at SC, and then you're traveling across the country with your dad, and you're realizing, okay, I'm a pro now. So what yeah. were the biggest challenges early on in just figuring out the LPGA and figuring out your game at the next level? Yeah, well, I quickly realized that I was spoiled at USC just <laughs> the, from the courses the bubble, we right? played yeah yep. from the, the the clothing that we got mm -hmm. so it was literally a culture shock mm. when I had to start all over and had to buy my own gear had to really you know grind out sponsors and had to build my name up again because that USC connection was not quite as strong right. um, but yeah, my dad was my caddy. He was kind of managing me at the same time, and, and it's kind of scary being away from home for the f for the first time. And um, I mean, coming from a Hispanic background, families, everything. Right. Um, but yeah, but my I had my dad to remind me of the big goal was to be on the LPGA. And sometimes you have to go through the hard times to really cherish um, those great moments. So when I went to LPGA Q School in December, and got the final card in a nine for one playoff. That was the moment that I've been working for my entire life. And I remember getting on the phone with my coach, Andrea Gaston, and said, I'm pretty sure we didn't prepare you for this, <laughs> but we're so happy for you. And even when I got on tour, it was it was scary because I, I knew a lot of the girls because I played college golf with sure. them, but still you're not playing for your school anymore you're playing for yourself you're playing for your livelihood there's so much on the line and uh yeah it was definitely a um a little awakening as a rookie sure but i got in the groove of it i just started thinking you know i earned my way here and it's time for me to share my story and to share the ability and so you know you get you get to experience all the ups and downs and uh, you get to trust your team. You finally get to be a boss. That must know? be nice. What's that like? <laughs> I mean, it, well, it's kind of scary, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like just to make decisions and kind of, kind of be accountable for them too. Um, 
So right? yeah, walk, walk me through that. I mean, you go from <laughs> just focusing on golf to now focusing on a brand, being a boss. Yeah. You know, what are some of the day-to-day -day things you had to deal with at first? Um, well, you have to trust in your management team. You have to talk with them. And who is Lizette Salas outside of being a golfer? Right. Um, what are your passions? What are you all about? What do you, what do you want to share with the world? Um, so that's something I never really thought about because I was just branded as a USC Trojan, mm -hmm. not as a as an individual. So with this new platform, I was able to share who am I outside of being being an athlete and what really motivates me to be the best athlete that I could be. So that was pretty interesting, got me out of my comfort zone. And, and so now eight years in, I'm just uh, really established in who I am and, and also realized that golf doesn't define me as a person mm. and the scores that I shoot on the golf course shouldn't define me as a person. Um, so that was really interesting. And, you know, changing your team when you feel is necessary isn't always easy. Um, but it, I also have to realize that this is a business and you're trying to get the best outcome. And, you know, I'm not always going to play competitive golf right. forever. So every decision is really important. And, um, yeah, and just including my family in this whole process is pretty cool, and I get to share it with my nieces and nephews, right. and uh, so yeah, it's it's a lot to take in, but it's this is what I worked for my entire life. I love the world that we live in today, where it's not just about what you're doing on the links, and it's not just you as a golfer, it's yeah. you in the community, it's you as a person, it's you as a businesswoman. I think that's yeah. one of the coolest things about today. So who are some of the other athletes that you look at, men and women, that inspire you, not only professionally as an athlete, but professionally off the golf course? Um, well, in the golf world, I've always looked up to Nancy Lopez uh, and Lorraine Ochoa, mm -hmm. just based on their background, on their work ethic, their relationship with their families. Uh, Julie Inkster is also up there, who happens to be a uh, Solheim Cup captain. Uh, Meg Mallon. Um, but Nancy really resonated with me a lot. Just her and her father had very similar relationships as, as m myself and my father. Um, really family oriented person. Um, she adored her fans. And I think that's what, that's why she is loved so much because she connects with everyone, her fans. Yes, yeah, she's an amazing golfer, but at the same time, she's a very humbled and uh, amazing woman. So, and she had three kids. Mm. She dealt with that on the road. And I hope to be a mother someday. So that's, you know, that's a beautiful thing to, to, to be not also not just an athlete but also a mother yeah you so can that, do it all yeah know? well she did it all and that was back in the day right. and um, she did it and there wasn't as much money back then as there is now no, to, to support that family so and there isn't social there wasn't social media back then I mean the fact that she did it um, means that you know we could do it as well yeah and even just the rise in women's sports the last couple of years you know yeah. it's, it's legit in terms of mainstream conversation where it hasn't been in past years so what's the best part of that for you right now just in terms of seeing the growth of women's sports over the past couple of years I mean it's amazing to be a part of it and it's amazing to to have partners like Aon put us on the same platform as the men with this one million dollar purse uh, so I mean it's just a it's just an eye-opening for women's sports in general. Um, we don't get the same um, same, shine, same purses right. as men, or um, but I think we're more relatable to the to the amateur golfer than than the men do. Um, I think this is a great great thing for women's sports. Yeah, no doubt. And you know, even thinking about the Solheim Cup, I mean, that's where the competitive juices are flowing. So just yeah. you know, like people obviously talk about the Ryder Cup, and that and that's great and everything. But yeah, Solheim Cup is legit. So it is. you know, how how can you work to get the Solheim Cup into just more of the mainstream conversation and just give people a glimpse of just what a day in the life is like in that Solheim Cup? Oh my God! It well, it's a two year process to make the team, and so I've been on the on tour for almost eight years now and I've I made it every single time nice. it's um, it's definitely the biggest honor that I've been able to be a part of um, so I played twice now in the US and one overseas yeah they don't really like us overseas no. and they d <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different ball game yeah. so whenever we hear silence on the course that's when we know we're doing a good job mm. and um, to wear the red white and blue coming from an, an immigrant family 
who has worked so hard to, to build a name in, in the States. Um, it's obviously a, a really good incentive. Um, just hearing, you're not only hearing your name, but you're hearing your country, what it represents, what it means to you. And so it gets pretty emotional when opening ceremonies and you just see uh, the national anthem and I get teary-eyed every single time and get goosebumps. And um, that first tea experience is nothing like ever I've ever experienced. And um, last year in 2017, I had a putt to to claim the, the Solheim Cup. And it was a three-footer, but it was the probably most important three-footer I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and I got the, the, the US flag wrapped around me. It was just an amazing moment. And to do that in front of our home crowd, I mean, it's addicting, and I want to be in, on as many teams as I can. And it's a beautiful thing because even in a sport like golf, where it's so individualistic, yeah, and you have that team, and then you throw country in there as well. Yeah, I, mean, I can't even imagine how special that is. Yeah, all egos aside, yeah. uh, and your pride is for your country, and not just for you. And, or, and you're playing for your partner. You're playing for the other eleven girls that are on the team. You're playing for your captains. Playing for your families. And it's a really big deal, but we try not to think about it sure. that much because or else our hands would be shaking um, But it's just uh, It's undescribable you mm. have to I encourage everyone to go to at least to Solheim Cup to experience it And I mean we don't get as big crowds as the Ryder Cup sure. so you you will get a closer experience more intimate experience, but man when we we're in Iowa it was just breathtaking mm. and uh, pretty Pretty cool that we ended up winning too. Yeah, and if you're overseas and you can keep those fans silent, I think yeah. you did a pretty good job. Yeah, and we get more fans too on right. on across the pond, so it's it's a win-win. Definitely. So thinking mm -hmm. about your game, I mean, you've had this eight-year growth. You've had a couple top ten finishes in there. How do you take your game to the next level in 2019? Um, well, we're going to make some changes uh, team-wise, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, I think I talked to my college coach about this, and I've I've played with a chip on my shoulder for the first seven years of my career, meaning I felt like I had to prove to a lot of people that I could play out here and, and, and make a name for myself. And now as I'm coming into my eighth season, I feel like I just need to play for myself mm. and, br and have joy out there. It's Obviously, it's grinding to, to be out there for 30 plus weeks out of the year, um, but it's really enjoying the process. and. I know that I'm capable of, of winning tournaments. Uh, I won in 2014. I think it's time to get a couple more Ws yeah. this year, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I think my game is there. Uh, I've been working out in the gym just to get a couple more yards off the tee, which I think will be very beneficial. Um, talent is just so, so great on tour that anyone, yeah. Yeah, anyone can win every week. So. Um, that's what my plan is and just trying to enjoy the process. Awesome. So lastly, when people think about your story, your relationship with your dad, everything you've overcome, what do you want them to think when they hear your name? Um, I like to hear, I, I like them to know that I'm a fighter. I'm a grinder. I never give up. Um, I may be down one week, but I will do my best to, to prove not only to you, but to myself that I could be a better player, um, that I love my family. Uh, I don't forget where I come from, and uh, that I'm here to make a stamp on the LPGA Tour for so that dreams can come true for anyone, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, all of that. Um, it's just how much you believe in yourself and how much you really want it. There you have it. Lizette <laughs> Salas is ready to put the LG LPGA on notice. Lizette, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.